Hey guys, it's Liv here. In today's video, I want to bring to you guys why I think that rain is going to be the most broken weather by a significant margin in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. If you guys enjoy this type of content and you want to see more videos discussing my thoughts on the upcoming games, leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. We are so close to 2k guys, so if you guys want to hit that before the gen, I would really appreciate it. Uh, otherwise, make sure to comment your thoughts below, click the links in the description for Twitter and Discord where you can get up to date on future videos, and for a couple extra dollars a month if you want to support the channel, link to the YouTube membership button as well as down below. Uh, but with that said, I made a pretty bold claim at the start of this video that I'm going to bring to you guys why I think rain will be by far the best weather in this gen. And and I don't actually think it's that outrageous of a claim to say. I will mention this video is going to touch on spoilers from specifically the elite portion of the Pokedex because otherwise we couldn't really get a video like this together. Uh, since Well, even still, I would argue we could actually just off of the revealed mods alone. But I think the case only becomes that much more significant when we go off of what's speculated to be in the Pokedex, at least off of the hints from people like Riddler Koo, for example, on Twitter. On Twitter, uh, and just going over those lists, I think only helps to strengthen the claim of why I do think that Rain will be uncontested. And this is both for singles and doubles, mind you. So this isn't just oh I think it will be really broken in doubles, or oh I think it'll be really good in singles. No, I think it will be obnoxious in both actually, as long as Trastal is allowed. And I think it's mostly just because of the candidates we have. Uh, for example, and I will quickly, briefly touch over the other weathers, but this video is mostly going to go over rain. Uh, for other setters that we have, we have some good ones for sand, being Hippowdon of course, Hippowdon is a great one, as well as Tarantar. So sand didn't lose any good setters. The issue is though, is the Excadrill is gone. So unless if you're really trying to sweep with some sort of other sand Rushmon, which looking at the list, I don't really see any. Uh, maybe I'm maybe I'm missing something, but as far as I can see, there is no Sand Slash, there is no Stoutland, and there is no Excadrill. So what does Sandrush actually have at this point, if not one of those Pokemon? Well, I'll tell you. If we look at Sandrush users, uh, Dragazolt is also not in. That's not an option. Uh, Lycanroc Day, I believe, is in though. So, you know, Lycanroc Day fans, you can run Lycanroc Day plus Titar and get a really good Sand Team out of that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically it. Uh, Hail is up next. Hail is one setter, which is of course a bomb snow we might get another one down the road but as far as we know right now it's just a bomb snow um we've already gotten revealed actually at least one slush rush pokemon being Satitan. we don't really know how that is but if anything it's arguably hail's best chance at being viable because the other hail sweepers that we have this gen are it's really nothing it's just bear tick and i'm pretty sure that's it because slush rush already didn't have a lot of pokemon and on top of that as well, the, the fossils are gone, and all in Sand Slash is gone. So again, Hail is also going to be pretty shafted. Uh, and finally though, we do have Sun. Now Sun is sure to save us. We still have Torkoal, and uh, we did lose though, sadly, a couple of really big options. We keep Charizard, of course, once Home comes out, which is pretty good. Uh, we get Hisuian Lilligant, which is pretty decent. But we lose out of Venusaur, which offensively was actually a huge thing for Zard. It was one of the best special attackers that we had for Chlorophyll Sweeping. And while I think that Sun will have some replaceable options, which I will actually get into in its own separate video, because I think that similar to Rain, Sun does war in its own video, I don't think Hail and Sand do actually. I think that they both have so many variables that they're going to need a Pokemon to be newly introduced for to even have a chance at being viable, so I'm not going to touch on those. But Sun will get his own video, stay tuned for that. Rain, though, is the subject of today's, and I do think it will be the best, considering when we look at the options that Sun's going to get, uh, this is Pokemon such as Sui and Lilligan, uh, Pokemon like Vileplume, for example. We don't really get a lot else outside of that, though, that will be, like, truly viable. And I, I use Vileplume as an example solely because it was kind of a place filler for Venusaur at a certain stage in the metagame. Uh, but even still, we don't actually even get Vileplume. I jumped the gun a little bit on that one, to say the least. Um, looking at Sun though, yeah, we don't really get a lot. I guess Lilligan regular form is going to be kind of viable in VGC, at least with an after you set, but otherwise, yeah, no, Sun's kind of shafted. Uh, thankfully though, they'll have Torkoal, at least, and Torkoal's a monster on its own, but for Rain. Let's get into Rain though, and I'm going to go over not only every Pokemon I think that will make Rain viable, but I'm also going to go over the Trassel types I think they'll use, because I do think it's kind of cool. Now, I will say, if your favorite Pokemon isn't mentioned here, it was intentional. Uh, I only had so many options to go over, but there are so many here. We have 13 different Pokemon, including our Rain Setter of the day, that I didn't really feel the need to miss anything, because if I only went over, like, a couple Pokemon, or whatever, every Pokemon that in theory could be a good Rain option, we would be here all day. But with that said, let's start off with our Rain Setter. So moving on to our first Trastal Pokemon, we do of course need to go into our Rain Setter, Pelipper. 
So Pelipper, I think we'll have two different options for Terrastal. Uh, the primary one, of course, being water and secondary for flying. Now, I gave a pretty standard Pelipper move set. This is literally just the exact same set that it typically runs if you're looking into a singles meta game. Uh, and then I threw on the Hurricane option because obviously doubles will need something as well. This could also end up potentially being a move such as Tailwind, for example, though, and that would also be a really good option. Uh, but typically, though, I would say that you're really most likely going to click Terra Water if you're ever clicking a Terra option at all. If you're looking for a more offensive set that might be clicking a Terrasta option more than just once in a blue moon, I would suggest Choice Scarf Pelipper. That's actually a pretty decent Terrasta option in my opinion because you could, in theory, go for Terrasta Water or Flying on that. And you could go for a little bit more damaging of a move than just Scald since you would have options such as Weather Ball that would be pretty viable there. But typically, Defensive Pelipper does rely too much on Roost to really benefit from actually using weather ball and also you don't really need to go to two water moves when you're already giving up a flying stab which is pretty useful in rain at the very least so i think that weather ball is such a neglected move on defensive but if you were to run off to pelipper that would still be a good choice i don't think a pelipper is really a mon that would actually need tire blast with move set truthfully pelipper being water flying is already fine enough and it's gonna terrestrialize maybe as i said once in like 20 30 games if you're lucky Going on to our first actual sweeper though, this one lines up mostly with VGC and I think this will be Golduck. Uh, so because of the fact that I do think that Golduck will only actually have VGC usage, I decided to give it a VGC moveset, being Scala Protect, Ice Beam, and Hydro Pump. Uh, with this sort of moveset, you would be running 228 speed modest. This would be enough in rain to outpace 10, 110 Scarfers, which the only one that I found noteworthy were really just Tsui and Zorak. I've noticed a couple other 110s that will be viable, even on Rain actually, stuff like Raichu, which we'll get into in a bit, uh, but I didn't really notice anything that, in my personal opinion, really warranted ending up being useful specifically for VGC. Uh, so I figured, why not just make Golduck creep that, Hisui and Zorak. So that's what our speed creep is for. We do have Scald and Hydro Pump on here. Hydro Pump is just for a really big nuke, and with Trasso Water, it would probably be as good of a damage output move as you can get. Ice Beam is mostly here for coverage, and it's really all you'd need. In theory, you could go with Trastle Ice, it would be a nice lure for grass types, but I think that Rain this gen will have enough options to where you could end up making a team that will be fine without this. Uh, but moving on though, we do have our next Pokemon here, uh, being none other than Tornadus. Now, I think that Tornadus will actually be one of the key Pokemon on a Rain team. You could go with a set with Tailwind, Hurricane, Protection, Heat Wave. You could also do something on here for Rain Dance if you want to go a Manual Rain, which isn't actually terrible in doubles, especially if you were finding a lot of Torkoal spam. Throwing a Manual Rain Dance in Torn wouldn't actually be that bad. You'd be able to pop Rain after the fact that Torkoal came in and get a nice nuke off and take out the opposing team. So with this sort of set though, I think definitively Terrastal Flying would be the case here. Uh, you would typically use this as, in my opinion, a really good way around Pokemon such as Amoongus in the metagame. That would otherwise be a really big option to try and stop Rain outside of just going for another weather altogether. So I think that in this case, Tornadus would benefit a ton from going for a Terrastal Flying set. Moving on to our next Pokemon though, uh, we do have Tornadus Therian. This would be, in my opinion, the Torn you would run if you were running this sort of option in singles. And with good reason. Torn is a nasty plot, it has great coverage with stuff like Focus Blast and Hurricane. Knockoff would mostly be to get rid of Boots, since in singles you would probably pair this with a good Spikes user, such as Greninja or even potentially Overquill, which I'll get into both of those in a bit. But in tandem though, I do think that this could end up being a really good breaker, and especially because you could benefit by switching out Torn in and out as needed to try and get some regenerator back this could be pretty solid uh in general though i think this will probably run trust of flying and you'll basically probably use it as a nice nasty plot option then go for trust of flying get a really strong hurricane off and wait until you get out of trust range then switch it out later and try and at least get a late game cleaning up with this pokemon uh the 121 speed is also amazing on torn it's great at outpacing a lot of common ou threats well a lot of pokemon that i should say will be expecting in the ou tier uh for example if we're looking at this list some pokemon that i expect to be there this speed tier will be very crucial for a pokemon like lucario uh halucha at least pre uh pre power i should say uh we'll also have options like land of t salamence etc all these pokemon that are like that 100 120 range all that 100 105 range i do think this will be very useful for but torn general will be an amazing asset terrain uh, next up though, we do have Zapdos. Now Zapdos, in my opinion, will actually be the best flying type to run off rain. Uh, in my opinion, Zapdos is pretty unrivaled actually as an offensive flying, and while you do lack Nasty Plot, which Tornadus gets, you do have 100% accurate not only Hurricane, but also Thunder. In tandem with this, you have Weather Ball, which is great for opposing rock types or opposing ground types with rock coverage, and it becomes a really obnoxious Pokemon to switch around, especially when you consider the fact that you do now have no concern over Pokemon such as Ferrothorn in the metagame, which otherwise would have maybe 
force you to consider Heat Wave as an option. The best grass type would really be a Pokemon like Breloom or Amoongus, so you should be pretty fine. Uh, it, the only real concern that I'm actually seeing here would be a Pokemon such as Tyranitar, which can not only clear the weather, but also is going to be a good switch into both your stabs, especially with that special defense boost. But if you pair Rain with a good option, maybe such as Breloom for example, you're pretty fine in that regard. Next up though, we do have Thunder Asterion, which also in my opinion will be another really good option for singles for rather teams. This would be the Pokemon that in my opinion would be a really good compromise actually between Tornadus and Zapdos because of the sole fact that you could actually handle Tyranitar with this. Uh, not only this, but you get a nice electric immunity out of Thunder Asterion, which is something that neither Zapdos or Torn can speak to. So I do think especially with rain teams now missing out on a Pokemon like Seismitoad, Thunderous might actually be a go-to this gen, and unlike in last gen where typically you could afford to run a Seismitoad or a Nat Dex Mega Swamper, you can't really do that in Paldea Dex as of right now, at least from what we're aware of. So because of that, since your next best water ground would be Gastrodon, which wouldn't really be great on an offensive rain team, or Whiskash, which isn't really great on any standard team, uh, you would most likely be relying on Thunderous, or just a ground type that doesn't really benefit from rain at all. Either way though, I do think a Thunderous is a legitimate option now in Rain, and it would be a legitimate viable one too. This pressures Tyranitar, which is something that neither Zapdos or Torn can do, and if you really wanted to bluff, you could actually take off something like a Weather Ball or Focus Blast, or even Nasty Plot, and go for Terra Blast, which in that case would benefit from Terrestrial Flying a lot, which is something that I'm sure a lot of people are questioning. Why Terrestrial Flying in a set that has no flying move? In this case, I think Terrestrial Flying would be most likely used with Terra Blast, either over Focus Blast or Nasty Plot, uh, potentially Weather Ball too, depending on how many water types you throw on the team you might not really need it uh but i i do think in general that most likely though on thunderous you're running terra thun uh, terra electric for thunder because if i want to go with terrestrial flying i'd probably go with zapdos or with tornadoes in most cases moving on though uh we do start to go into our vgc electric types this one being raichu which i think will be amazing on rain uh we did see this gen already pokemon like regieleki were really good mainstays on rain with electroweb and i don't really think it's actually going to change unless they change how the speed mechanic works again uh, but with stuff like Encore is a really good support option, as well as Fake Out and Thunderbolt, this Pokemon could be a really menacing Terrastal Electric option. Albeit, I will say that unlike Regieleki, Raichu is actually pitifully weak, but you could potentially take advantage of the Lightning Rod and maybe boost your special attack to where this could be a menace. I do think that most likely though in VGC, Terrastal will be left over to Pokemon like Tornadus or Rainsweeper to try and go for it, but Raichu in theory, if it was running a Terrastal option, it would probably be Electric. Moving on to our next Pokemon though, we start to get into our just really good water type breakers. Now, I'm a huge advocate for running a really good water type offensive option on Rain, and I don't think the regular Protean Greninja will actually be that. However, it might try and fill some of the gaps that its partner Ash Greninja would be leaving, should it not be transferable in Paldea Dex. Uh, at the very least though, for Pal Paldea Dex, I do think that Protean Gren actually does have some merit here. It's a really good spiker, it's a great fast option for Rain, and with Terrestrial Water, you could still actually get some really good offensive potency here. Assuming that Protean isn't really nerfed to actually affect uh, Terrastal, this is actually going to be a monster, and you could run this in theory as well with something like Terrastal Psychic, which would be great for Toxic Specs and Amoongus, and also Breloom too, actually. Uh, or you could run this with something like Terrastal, I don't, I don't know, honestly, this is a lot of Terrastal options that could work. I think that Water would be the best one solely to also take advantage of Rain, but truthfully, you could make a lot of things work on Gren. Heavy Duty Boots are here mostly just as Spikes Immunity, however, you could also benefit from something like a Life Orb, or even trying to run a Pseudo Ash Gren set and run Choice Specs. But speaking of Choice Specs Ash Gren, I do think this is a mainstay. On Nat Dex teams, assuming that Terrastal is legal, this will be the thing that actually gets Ash Grand banned in my opinion. Ash Grand already is a phenomenal breaker, and running something like a Terrastal Water in tandem with that to make the water type attacks even harder to switch around will be insanity. I do think as well, if you want another option though, Dark Pulse is still going to be amazing to try and just in general pop Terrastal Dark into a Dark Pulse and make that a much more potent offensive option. Uh, but if you want to look into some other options with Ash Gren, I do think that Life Orb is another good one here. Depending on if Terrastal will fade away when you switch or not, if it works similar to Dynamax in that regard, there's a lot of merit actually to just run a Life Orb or uh, even an Expert Belt set I think could be pretty viable here. But regardless, it's going to be something we'll have to see. I do think a Specs Ash Gren though will be one of, if not the best breakers that Rain has in singles, specifically in the Nat X meta, uh, because solely the fact that we don't know if Ash Gren will be transferable or not, Really hoping it is, because I do think it would be such an amazing offensive piece for Rain, especially if you were to consider Rain and Ubers, I think this might actually be the Pokemon that gives it an actual platform to stand on, but we'll have to see. 
Moving on though, we do have Azumarill. Azumarill is actually a pretty cool option in rain. Uh, we've seen this in very certain cases where it tries to fill a Crawdon roll, or maybe even outclasses Crawdon in that regard, but Choice Band of Huge Power is an absolute nuke on rain. And with Liquidation and Aqua Jet, this is actually a monster. You have Ice Punch as well, which Ice Punch is great for handling offensive grass types, as well as just in general water type resists, a lot of them get hit by Ice Punch. And Player is just a great stab. Azumarill in general will be an amazing breaker for Rain, and I think in tandem with Terrastal Water, this will again be an absolute mainstay for a huge breaker on Rain. But what if I don't want to run Azu? What if I want another option? I do think there are a couple others here. First one, of course, being Basket Legion. I think on Banded sets, this would actually be amazing. I think that in general, you'd probably run Terrastal Water and take advantage of Wave Crash and Aqua Jet, or even potentially Terra Blast if you don't want to necessarily click Wave Crash, depending on how it gets transferred over or not. This could also potentially be Liquidation, which I think is a pretty likely option to get onto Basket Legion once the new games come out, or even just Waterfall at the very least. Uh, but Terra Blast, I think, would most likely benefit actually from Terra Ghost. This would give Basket Legion a really strong physical Ghost move, should it not get another one on transfer. So I really do think this will actually be an incredible option for male Basket Legion. If I want to run a really good special set though, we do have female Basket Legion, which can run choice specs and do the job pretty well. I still have Wave Crash on here just because truthfully I'm not sure how it will end up functioning, uh, but I'm pretty sure that I saw that this was like a good speed boosting option and this could be good actually to snowball teams, especially if you were to run like a Life Orb set this could be good, uh, as well as potentially Flip Turn in that slot or even just Hydro Pump when it does inevitably get it. Though I think realistically Wave Crash and Water Pulse will probably change likely to Hydro Pump and Scald once the updated movesets come and Vast Legion will most likely get both. Uh, in general though, again, Flip Turn's another great option, but Shadow Ball and Ice Beam would probably be the main selling points for a female Vasky Legion. Uh, regardless though, we do have one other Pokemon I want to get into, being Overquill. This is another Swiss Swim Pokemon, and I think it's another great Spikes option. So we have Spikes, Bar Barrage, and Aqua Tail on here, and even outside of Terra Blast, if you were to just, let's say, run a Water type or a Poison type and Terrastal move, both of these are great options. However, if I want to run Terrastal Dark, I think that I would most likely be running Terra Blast in that last slot, if assuming that Overquill doesn't get an option such as Knock Off, Crunch, etc. to take advantage of this. Uh, and I will say with Terrastal, uh, that if Overquill does get a really strong Dark type option, I think that it's most likely going to lean more towards Water and Poison type sets. Poison because it's a really good grass killer for Terrastal, and Water because it would be benefited by Rain, and it would essentially give Overquill a wide variety of stab options to take advantage of. But if Overquill doesn't get a good physical go uh, dark move, this might actually be something that really saves it in the presence of an offensive rain team. Uh, not only this, but it would be a great spikes option, and you could also even just, instead of Swiss Swim, run Intimidate, and that could be pretty beneficial as well. Uh, now, I will say that there are a lot of other Pokemon that you could run in rain, but for the sake of the video, I don't, I'm just going to breeze through these. Braylon would be a great option, for example, in singles. It's a great way around opposing water types that might take advantage of you, and it's a great way if you don't want to necessarily throw an electric type on there. We have Salamence, which I've mentioned actually a countless amount of times in VGC. Could be a really good Intimidate option for Rain. However, we have Torin, which I think might potentially take the, the Flying type role on here for Trostal. So because it's also good support, but it really depends on what Rain team comps actually end up being like. Again, Salamence could be still an amazing option there though. Uh, as far as coverage options for Rain though, we do have a lot of other Pokemon here. For example, we have Serena again as another anti one. We have Nidoking as well, which could in theory be a good Trostal Poison user, which could end up being a really strong strong option to kill grasses as well as just the wide coverage that it does have. Uh, but I think that Rain is going to be pretty fine this gen, even with more defensive options. We have stuff like Gudra, which could be Trassel Dragon or just a good AV Sponge. So regardless, I know this video could be going on way too long, but comment your guys' thoughts on what you think will be good Rain options. I know there are probably another 20 or so that I've already forgotten, and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts below. But if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, if you want to see a sun portion of this, because I have a lot of other options for sun as well, albeit not as many, but the ones for sun are a lot more nuanced, so we might be able to still get a good video out of it. Leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. I know I've been talking about Terrasa a lot on the channel, but I think it's important to try and explore this new mechanic as well as possible. And I truly did think that rain deserved its own video away from every other weather because rain is already such a prevalent option. And even if we go into, let's say, how sun as well could have been, that's probably another 10, 15 minutes. Sand and hail were probably gonna be really quick to be fair, but I didn't wanna overload all just talking about weather because otherwise it would have been about like 20, 30 moves that just dumped right at you guys. And I think that organizing it like this is a little better. Uh, but with that said though, if you guys enjoyed, click the links in the description for Twitter and Discord, great ways to step to date as well as to, to communicate with me. Comment thoughts down below, leave a like, and shout out to our channel members of course, being Josh aka Ultra Player, Mia, and Zeke Zero. If you guys want to become channel members too, the link down below is going to be there if you want to join for just a couple dollars a month. It's a great way to support me for free. 
uh well not for free for a little bit of extra money and it does go a long way but with that said though i will see you guys in tomorrow's video where we actually have a pokemon legends rcs wi-fi battle if or not wi-fi battle showdown battle if you want to say that uh, if you want to see that oh my god i can't talk today make sure to stay up to date for that and i will see you guys later until then peace out guys